Hey there, Orioles fans. Today is Monday, May 23rd, 2022, and welcome back in to the Locked On Orioles podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. As always, I'm your host, Connor Newcomb, and coming up on today's episode, this might be the most exciting, most fun, most enjoyable episode of the pod that I have done so far this year. The Orioles take two out of three from the Tampa Bay Rays over the weekend with two Rugnet Odor walk-off wins, the home run on Friday, and the little dribbler up the first baseline on Sunday. But that wasn't even the most exciting part of the weekend, because Adley Rutschman, the top prospect in baseball, finally came up and made his Major League debut on Saturday. And I'm going to break it all down on this episode with my three big takeaways from a weekend series win over Tampa, starting with Adley's debut. Then we'll talk about the Orioles pitching situation. It was basically the kitchen sink because they had to. And then we'll talk about the hero of those two wins in the veteran, Rugned Odor. But that's all coming up on this very exciting episode of the Locked On Orioles podcast. You are Locked On Orioles, your daily Baltimore Orioles podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So what a weekend of Orioles baseball that was. The O's take two of three from the Rays, now 17 and 25 on the season. Winning it eight to six on Friday night in 13 innings on a Rugnet Odor walk-off two-run homer. Then they fell on Saturday by a score of six to one, but came back with another walk-off win. This one took 11 innings with a 7-6 victory on Sunday to take the series. And I'm going to get you my three big takeaways from the weekend. But first, this episode of the Locked On Orioles podcast is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. And before we get to more Orioles talk, just want to thank you for making Locked On Orioles your first podcast listen of the day. Locked On Orioles is free and available on all podcast listening platforms, episodes Monday through Friday, every day of the week dropping wherever you listen to pods and right here on YouTube as well. We thank you so much for shooting us up the boards, continuing to have the best weeks and the best months over the past month or two in Locked on Orioles history. Been hosting this podcast for over two years. Listenership continues to grow. And that's why the team still not playing overall great baseball. But thank you again for making Locked on Orioles your first listen of the day. And for your first listen today, what a weekend in Birdland. I mean, what a weekend. The Orioles take two of three from the Rays, but my first big takeaway from the weekend, of course, starts with Adley Rutschman, the number one prospect in baseball, as we probably all found out a little after it broke because it came out before 8 a.m. on Saturday morning, but the Orioles were calling up their top prospect to make his major league debut in Saturday night's game against the Rays. Now, you remember on this podcast about a month ago, my official prediction had been Friday night. I predicted Friday, May 20th, as the Adley Rutschman debut. And I was a little on edge when that Friday debut didn't happen, but I missed it by one day. He comes up on Saturday, May the 21st. And, you know, Mike Elias talked to the media, was also on the broadcast on Masson a couple times this weekend, talking about why it was Saturday instead of Friday. It had to do with he wanted Adley to catch three days in a row and then get an off day before he came to the big leagues. He said it's something they like to do in spring training, get catchers three days in a row. Well, because all of minor league baseball is off on Mondays, Adley caught Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, got the day off Friday in Norfolk, and then came up on Saturday. And I get all the stuff, oh, blah, blah, blah. They announced it the morning of the game. You know, it was the same time as Preakness in Baltimore. I get it. The crowd was a little smaller than it could have been, whatever. It was a fun weekend. I don't care about all that stuff. Adley is finally in the bigs. And, well, what did he do? Well, it's not like he had the greatest weekend of all time, but I will say very impressive in his first two games. Started with Saturday, catching, hitting sixth in the lineup, catching Kyle Bradish, and the first battery faced. He framed a called strike three to start the game Saturday. And I was in the ballpark. It was a whole lot of fun for that debut on Saturday. An ovation when he stepped on the field, you know, taking it all in, spinning around uh, and looking at the ballpark before he got down to catch Bradish's first warm up pitches. Gets an ovation there. Gets an ovation when he comes up in the second inning. Strikes out on four pitches. Gets an ovation walking back to the dugout. He comes up to the plate four times. Goes one for three with a walk in the fifth. And then, of course, his first major league hit, a triple in the seventh. 
Got a standing O every time he came up and every time he went back to the dugout after each of those at-bats. Listen, he didn't scorch that triple. It was 75 miles per hour off the bat, kind of looped one into the corner. I thought it was going to be called a double with an error because Brett Phillips really struggled picking up that ball in the right field corner and Adley got to third. And of course, you know, he was stranded at third base and did not score. But I mean, just what a moment it was on Saturday, framed pitch as well. Just great, great stuff. And, and listen, you know, Adley gets called up. They DFA Anthony Bemboom in the corresponding move, the move we all knew was happening. Shout out to Bemboom. He will always go down as an Orioles lore as the guy who uh, was finally replaced by Adley Rutschman. But then we go to Sunday. And of course, he is the DH because you don't want guys catching day game after a night game. So he's DHing Robinson Chirinos back in the lineup as the catcher, hitting fifth in Sunday's lineup because Austin Hayes got the day off. And well, Adley, you know, it's a one for five, but he didn't strike out. He was hit by a pitch as well to get on base. And his single was a, a nice little shot into right center field. And listen, he scored the game winning run on Sunday as well. He was the zombie runner to start the bottom of the 11th on second. Chris Owings bunts him over to third with one away. And then the little dribbler up the line at first base that got by G-Man Choi off the bat of Rugnet Odor scores Adley, and he scores the winning run in the Sunday game to win the series. Overall, thought he looked good. Thought the swing looked good. Thought the swing looked a little better from the left side than the right side through two games. Again, we see 10 plate appearances so far. I think throughout his career, I think most people thought the left-handed swing is just a touch better than the right-handed in terms of his stats and his swing, but he's still a very good switch hitter from both sides of the plate. It was just so cool. And the other thing that was really awesome from Adley is something we've talked about on this podcast before is what he's done throughout his minor league career in the Orioles system is that you know anytime an inning ends, instead of walking back to the dugout, he walks right up the first base or the third base line and meets his pitcher right on the line to dap him up, give him a glove tap, talk about that last batter, talk about the inning, and start that conversation early as they go to the dugout. I always thought it was a cool thing. You know, we've heard from Orioles pitchers. We've talked to Orioles pitchers about it on this podcast, how they enjoy it as well and working with Adley. And you always thought, you know, oh, will it translate to the big leagues? Well, top of the first inning ends with Kyle Bradish on the mound on Saturday. And of course, Bradish is a guy that Adley has worked with before last year and this year in the minors. But Bradish comes right down. Adley goes right up to him, and he did that all weekend, and it was awesome. And it kind of culminated in the Sunday game. You know, you have CNL Perez pitching on fumes in extra innings. You know, puts up a zero in the top of the 10th. Orioles unable to score. You know, Adley hits a ball to the warning track and right that you know maybe we thought was going to be a walk-off three-run homer for Adley Rutschman. So we go to the 11th. Perez is back out there because the Orioles don't have any more arms, which we'll get to in a second. And Perez loads the bases with two outs and induces a fly ball to center to end the inning. And Perez is fired up, you know, coming off the mound, gets a huge out to keep the game tied in the 11th. And who's right there to meet him just as fired up is Adley Rutschman with the helmet off, coming up to give Perez a hug. I mean, it was awesome. And then when he scored the winning run on the walk-off at the bottom of the 11th, immediately just wrapped into a bear hug by Austin Hayes after scoring that run, who, you know, Hayes was a hero himself, had the two-run single in the bottom of the ninth Sunday just to get that game to extra innings, got that hit with two outs. Had a big hit Friday as well, did Hayes, who continues to hit the ball well. But, man, it was just awesome to see. I mean, you know, the standing ovations, I, I had chills going to the ballpark on Saturday. I think that was the first time I'd felt chills since I was all the way to the ballpark in the 2014 Game 1 of the ALDS against the Tigers. It was a great feeling. The standing ovations were awesome. It was cool to see Adley back there. Looking up at his picture on the screen when he was hitting, it felt surreal that he was finally here. But he is finally here. And here's the other great thing. I've seen some people, you know, talk about this on Twitter this week. It's not just that, you know, he makes the debut on Saturday, which is obviously, you know, just an awesome thing to have for the franchise. And it's not just that, you know, he's back in there on Sunday and he's DHing. And of course, he did get to catch a couple innings in extra innings Sunday because the O's had to burn the DH after they pinch hit for Chirinos, which was the right move by Brandon Hyde. Nicely done in the bottom of the ninth. Get Hayes in there to tie the game. But it's the fact that he's now just a part of this team. He's now the starting catcher. He's going to catch probably five days a week. He's going to be the lineup five to six days a week. And whether he's DHing or catching, he's going to be penciled in there pretty much every Orioles lineup. And once the, you know, great feeling of, you know, he's getting a standing ovation every at bat now wears off. You know, they're going to New York and they're going to Boston this week. So he's going to be in some interesting environments for a rookie, but he's going to be in the lineup every single day. It's going to become a normal thing to see Adley out there, and that's the best part of it. You know, it's not just a one-time thing where he comes up for a weekend, then he's gone. 
He's here and he's here to stay. And for me, it does feel like this is kind of the first turning point of this rebuild when their top prospect, Adley Rutschman, the guy that you've built around, is now in the big leagues, had a good weekend, big weekend for the O's. The vibes are immaculate in Birdland right now. But it wasn't just Adley who made the O's play well this weekend and, and get two of three from the Rays. You got to shout out this Orioles pitching staff because everybody had to play their part. And I mean, everybody had to play their part this weekend. And we'll talk about all the guys who stepped up for the O's on the mound against Tampa in just a second. But first, let's talk about Built Bar because with all the pitches that some of these O's arms had to throw this weekend, they might need an energy boost. So hopefully they will reach for a delicious and nutritious Built Bar the best tasting protein bar out there on the market. You've heard me talk about them plenty of times, but it's a protein bar that still gives you 17 grams of protein, low sugar, low carbs, low calories. So it's got all the health benefits you get from a protein bar. But when you think protein bar, at least when I think protein bar, I think something, yeah, it's probably be good for me, but it's not going to taste good. It's going to have that weird chalky taste. I'm just not going to like it. No, no, no. Built Bar tastes like a candy bar and you still get all the benefits of a protein bar. They've got great flavors like my favorite peanut butter brownie. There's white chocolate chunk. There is fruity flavors as well. And they're always coming out with new flavors that you can try. And so surely you'll have your favorite soon enough. So if you want to get your hands on these delicious and nutritious protein bars, go to built.com. And if you use the promo code locked 15, you'll get 15% off your order. Again, that is promo code locked 15 for 15% off at built.com. So the Orioles take two of three from the Rays, and Adley debuts, Birdland buzzing, everybody's excited. But listen, Adley had two hits. They weren't super consequential hits in the game. He did score the winning run on Sunday, but he didn't get himself out there. He was the zombie runner to start the inning on second base. There was a lot of other guys who made the Orioles take two out of three from the Rays. You got to remember, the Orioles lost 18 of 19 to the Rays last year. They were 0-3 against the Rays this year. Of course, were you know swept in Tampa to open up the 2022 season. Things have not gone well for the Orioles against the Rays. So how did they win two out of three this weekend? The pitching staff, specifically the bullpen. I mean, what a performance it was this weekend. You, you start on Friday in a game where, you know, Tyler Wells, I thought, pitched pretty solid. I mean, listen, he had a no-hitter through four innings. Now, his stuff wasn't the best of the season, but he did get 10 whiffs, and he had the, the four no-hit innings for Tyler Wells. And then... He pitches into the fifth. He gives up the three-run homer to Mike Zanino, and he only lasts four and two-thirds, so you turn it over to the bullpen. Well, here comes Logan Gillespie, second career appearance, inning and two-thirds scoreless. Here comes the resurgent Keegan Aiken, two and a third scoreless out of the bullpen to get the game to extra innings. And then you're playing the zombie runner game. You, know, you go to the 10th, and the Orioles had the nice comeback in the seventh inning to tie things at three. You go to the 10th tied. And the top of the 10th doesn't go your way. Brian Baker had just kind of been gassed. He gives up two runs. You're thinking, oh, this thing's over. Orioles load the bases in the 10th. Two-run single, Anthony Santander ties the game. Then they had second and third no outs and didn't score. So we go to the 11th. You're thinking, oh, geez, that was the Orioles' chance. They can't get it. It's not going to happen. And they end up you know, scoring a run in that 11th inning. Then you go to the bottom of the 11th, and the Orioles are able to scratch across a run. Austin Hayes with a two-out single ties the game. You go to the 12th. You know, Dylan Tate throws an inning. And CNL Perez finishes off the 11th. You go to the 12th. Well, here comes Nick Vespi, who was called up on Tuesday, but had yet to pitch. So here he comes in a tie game against the Rays, two-time defending AL East champions, in the top of the 12th inning with a runner already on second to make his major league debut. How about that for Vespi? And we love Vespi. 15 scoreless innings in AAA before getting the call up. But how about a spot for that? And Vespi dominated not just one but two scoreless innings he puts up a scoreless 12th the Orioles don't score he goes back out there and puts up a scoreless 13th and the stuff was nasty from Vespi just as nasty as we've seen it in AAA all year I mean obviously I was excited about the Rutschman debut but the Vespi debut was almost as exciting he throws that slider out of his 24 pitches he threw 14 sliders we know he's always slider heavy Six whiffs on 10 swings on that slider. That is ridiculous. And then, you know, he threw his fastball, which is, you know, an 89 to 90 mile per hour pitch in the zone. He's good. He's really, really good. And, you know, the O's ended up optioning him back to AAA. 
We'll see when he comes back. They kind of were were handcuffed in terms of pitching because of the 13 inning game, and they needed a long man. So they optioned him, and they ended up optioning Logan Gillespie as well before Saturday's game. And so both of them are back in AAA, and unless there's an injury, they can't come back for 10 days. So hopefully after those 10 days are up, they will come right back. But they could come back earlier because, you know, the Orioles win the game on Friday night. You go to Saturday, and, you know, you get a a so-so start from Kyle Bradish. He got hit around hard, but some of his stuff still looked good. He got 10 whiffs, five on the slider. And I think really the big performance Saturday was Mike Bauman, who the Orioles recalled finally on Saturday because they needed a long man. And how about Mike Bauman out of the bullpen? I mean, you, you got to give him a shout out. Three and two thirds, three hits, one run, two Ks, no walks, did give up a homer, had only three whiffs and 51 pitches. The stuff wasn't dominant, but he got the O's to the end of that game. And yes, they lost six to one on Saturday because the offense didn't do much, but Bauman got them to the end of that game. And oh boy, how important was that for Bauman to get them to the end of Saturday's game? Because you show up Sunday and Spencer Watkins gets the start. And before even recording an out, Spencer Watkins is nailed with a line drive off the bat of G-Man Choi. It hits him in the right throwing arm. And he's done. He has to come out of the game. Completely unfortunate for Watkins and for the Orioles, who had just optioned Vespi and Gillespie. And their long guys were basically unavailable because you had two long guys on the roster, Keegan Aiken and Mike Bauman. Bauman had thrown 51 pitches the night before. No way he was pitching Sunday. Aiken had thrown 33 pitches on Friday in a super emergency. You could have used him, but Brandon Hyde was trying his absolute best not to use him. So that happens. So you go to Joey Crable as your first reliever, and all of a sudden, Crable serves up a three-run homer, and all of a sudden, it's 4 nothing in the top of the first. You're already into the bullpen with no long man, and I tweeted this out. I'm thinking, this is going to get very, very ugly. Like, I thought for sure we'd see at least one position player pitch on Sunday. But all of a sudden, the Oriole bullpen just flips it on its head. I mean, huge hand to Joey Crable. Three innings, only that one earned run on the homer, three hits, two Ks, and no walks. I mean, three innings for Joey Crable. I don't even think he had gone two innings yet this year, and he goes three out of the pen to save the Orioles. Then they turn things over after that to Brian Baker. And after he struggled Friday night, you know, he did give up a run in this one, but two innings, one run, one hit, three Ks for Brian Baker. Dylan Tate, two scoreless innings out of the bullpen, and all of a sudden you're in the eighth. And you get Felix Bautista, a scoreless eighth. And, you know, the O's start trickling back into the game. You know, a game that was, you know, 5-2 and 5-3 and then 6-3. You know, Mount Castle hits a homer, and then you score on the error in the seventh. It's 6-4, and... Then you have Jorge Lopez available. He throws a scoreless top of the ninth. All of a sudden, Austin Hayes is a pinch hitter, gets the big hit bottom nine, two run single, ties the game at six, and you have the, you know, the 50 minute rain delay. And so once you have the rain delay, you're thinking, all right, we can probably get two innings out of Jorge Lopez. Well, now you have the rain delay. So Lopez is out of there. So you're looking down at the bullpen, heading to the 10th inning. Your only pitcher left is basically CNL Perez, because the only other guys in the bullpen were Bauman unavailable and Aiken pretty much unavailable unless it was an emergency. So you go to Perez, and what does he do? Scoreless 10th inning, big strikeouts. But the Orioles, not able to score in the bottom of the 10th. You know, McKenna and Rutschman just miss walk-off homers. So then you go to the 11th. How about Perez again? Another scoreless inning, gets a big strikeout of Wander Franco, gets out of the bases loaded jam. At that point, I don't even know what the O's would have done had they gone to the 12th but they walk it off and they didn't have to worry about it. And it just a huge shout out to all of those pitchers who just did a fantastic job. And some of them didn't have their best outings, but they gave the O's innings. They literally did not get an out from the starter Spencer Watkins before the injury Sunday. And they didn't have a long man available. They played 11 innings and won the game. That was, I'm going to say it. That was the most impressive Orioles win. That Sunday walk-off win, seven to six was the most impressive Orioles win this season, definitely, and probably since the start of the rebuild. To have Watkins go out, to have no long man, and have your bullpen cover 11 innings when they weren't exactly rested was just unbelievable. It was unbelievable to win that game against, you know, it's not like they were playing, I would say the Tigers, but the Tigers did sweep the Orioles. Not like they were playing the Pirates or the Reds. They were playing the Rays. 
Back-to-back division champs, pretty good offense that has killed the Orioles over the past couple of years. I mean, wouldn't even let up. O's were 1-18 against them last year. And to win that game, you know, I talk about Adley Rutschman coming up. Maybe that's the turning point. It felt like that combined with them winning that game on Sunday. And listen, this doesn't mean the O's are going to finish with a winning record of getting the playoffs this year. The roster still has a lot of holes. But the feeling of this weekend, I just want to hold on to it. And they could get swept in New York this week. They could lose all three games at Yankee Stadium. They could go 0-8 on this road trip. And just the feeling of this weekend and what happened and how they did it, just shout out to the pitchers. But because of all that pitching that they had to do, and listen, they already made the roster moves I talked about. You know, they, they optioned Gillespie, they optioned Vespi, they, they they got Mike Bauman back to the big leagues. Of course, Ryan Mountcastle came back off the injured list as well on Saturday, ended up homering in the Sunday game, had a single in the ninth Sunday to start that rally. But Ryan Mountcastle actually left the game. Now, they said it was heat-related cramps when he left the game in the ninth. So hopefully it had nothing to do with that forearm. And it seems like, you know, maybe he'll he'll take the day off Monday, but should be good to go and should avoid the injured list. But besides that, Brandon Hyde said it after the game, the Orioles need to make some pitching moves because they used the entire bullpen on Sunday. And their current long man, Mike Bauman, still not available. I would say Keegan Aiken probably available again Monday. But they don't even have Bauman available, who is the truest long reliever that's currently on the roster. So they need to make some moves, as Hyde said. And... I mean, it's probably going to be Mike Bauman going back down. I mean, he threw 51 pitches Saturday, and it stinks that this is happening to Bauman again where he throws a lot of pitches, pitches well, and has to get sent down. But that's the spot the Orioles are in. So my guess is Bauman would go down, and then you know the x-rays were negative on Spencer Watkins, which is a really good sign after taking a hit with that line drive. But he did have to leave the game. So you could maybe see the Orioles placing just – as a precautionary thing, Watkins on the 15 day injured list. And if they do that, remember you can recall guys because of injury before the 10 days. So maybe Bauman goes down, Watkins goes on the injured list, and then you recall Vespi. And then maybe you look down there and I mean, do you get Zach Lowther up here? He hasn't pitched well in triple a, but he can give you some length. I mean, potentially, you know, could you see Marcos Duplan again if they make a 40-man remove? Or, you know, you could potentially see maybe a Cole Uvula. Both of those guys are pitching very well out of the bullpen in AAA. You'd need to make a 40-man move for both of them, but it's a possibility on both sides. It'll be interesting to see what the Orioles do. You know, if Watkins doesn't go to the IL, I would guess, you know, maybe a Joey Crable or a Brian Baker who still have options. They get option to AAA just because they each pitch so much this weekend just to get some some fresh bodies up. You know, you don't know if the O's want to lose them for 10 days, but they're in a rough spot after these two games. But it feels so much better to be in that rough spot when you win the two extra inning games. Because if you lose those two games and you're in this spot, things are feeling pretty desperate. What We will see what those pitching moves are Monday. And of course, we'll talk about them on Tuesday's episode. But got one more big takeaway to get to on the weekend. And it's Rignet Odor because... Yeah, some other Orioles hitters had some big weekends, and we saw Adley Rutschman debut, but Odor was at the plate when the O's walked off on both of these wins, and we'll talk about his May and what he's meant to the Orioles coming up in just a bit. So Rugnet Odor, the hero of this weekend for the Orioles, as they take two out of three from the Tampa Bay Rays, and we start obviously on Friday night when Odor comes up to the plate in the bottom of the 13th inning, Orioles and Rays 6-6. to Runner on third with one away. And Ralph Garza, the side armor at the dish. And Odor just obliterates a baseball on Friday night. I mean, it was was fun to see him hit that ball into the flag court for a walk-off two-run homer. 106.7 miles per hour off the bat. Ball traveled 405 feet for the Odor walk-off homer. And we talked about on Friday's episode after Anthony Santander hit the walk-off homer on Thursday afternoon against the Yankees to snap the losing streak. It was the O's' first walk-off since the Rio Ruiz against the Astros in 2019. Well, they waited that long for their first walk-off homer since, and then they do it on back-to-back days when Odor does it in the 13th on Friday. And for Rugnet Odor, it started but also kind of continued 
a resurgence from him in an Orioles uniform. You know, he's hitting now 254 in May and is 746 OPS in the month. That's not crazy good, but it's much better than his really, really rough start offensively to the season. And so he hits this walk-off homer. And then, you know, he hits a triple in the game on Saturday. And then he hits two doubles in the game Sunday. And then he comes up to the plate in a similar spot. Bottom 11, runner on third, one out, tie game. And no, he doesn't crush one into the right field seats this time. But he hits a little dribbler up the first baseline. And because G-Man Choi was so, you know, occupied with looking home to see if Adley was coming home, he forgot to field the ball, goes under Choi's glove, rolls into shallow right field, Rutschman scores, and the Orioles walk it off, off the bat of Odor. And obviously, you know, that one was a little different. The homer was 107 miles per hour and 405 feet off the bat. The Odor walk-off on Sunday was 35 miles per hour off the bat and traveled 67 feet in the air. It did have an expected batting average of 280, which is actually not bad for that ball, but... <laughs> You walk off on 107 miles per hour and you walk off on 35 miles per hour. That's uh, that's pretty good stuff from Rugnet Odor. But however he did it, he won it. And listen, he goes four for 12 on the weekend, two doubles, a triple, a homer, three RBIs. He only strikes out twice in the three games, gets two walk-off hits. Cool moments for him, you know, being interviewed on the broadcast both times. He's got a seven-game hitting streak going now. And as I said, he's been pretty good in May. And listen, he's not walking. The man has walked four times this year. He has not drawn a walk since April 23rd. Yes, check your calendar. It has been exactly a month since Rugnet Odor drew his last walk. So he's not exactly an on-base guy, but he's getting more hits. He's getting more extra base hits. He's driving the ball a lot better, especially over the past couple of weeks and especially over this seven-game hitting streak that he's on. And I don't know what the future holds for Rugnet Odor. But with Ramon Arias kind of struggling now, shout out to Arias. He also had a two-hit game on Sunday. That was big for him. But with Uria struggling, and listen, Jorge Mateo has been playing great defensively, but he's been struggling with the bat. Tyler Nevins has been hitting well. That's been good. But Mateo struggling. Uria struggling. Who the heck knows how and why Chris Owings is still on this team, but he's been terrible with the bat. The yeah, at-bats are going to be there for Rugnet Odor, and we're going to see Ryland Bannon back up here soon, and we're probably going to see Jemai Jones in the big leagues at some point. They'll get their chances. But Odor's been a veteran guy who brought the home run chain in. The Orioles are basically paying nothing on his salary for him to be on this one-year major league deal with the O's. He's going to start striking out more again. He's not going to walk. The average is going to go back down. He's not. He may not have another walk-off the rest of the year. But to have two in a weekend, he's bringing the vibes. He's playing a pretty solid second base defensively as well. He's, you know, he's only 28, but he's a veteran leader in a, in a very you know, clubhouse that's getting younger and younger. He's been around the block. He's been in the playoffs with the Rangers and with the Yankees. He's seen a lot and been on some really good baseball teams and can bring that kind of stuff into the clubhouse. I don't love Rugnet Odor, the player at this point, but it feels like the Orioles kind of love Rugnet Odor, the guy in the clubhouse. And he seems to be a perfect fit on this team. And again, who knows if he even finishes the season with the Orioles? I would doubt he's back with the Orioles in 2023 at that. And if he starts slumping again and, you know, Bannon or Jones or maybe Taron Vavra, who is uh, going to start a rehab assignment in the next week or two in the minors, maybe one of those guys pushes into a spot again in the majors and Odor gets a DFA. But at the end of the day, you know, I'm liking what he's bringing to this team. It's better than I thought it would be because he hasn't really hit at all in the big leagues over the past couple of years. And he's bringing good vibes and two walk-offs are very, very good vibes as the Orioles take two out of three from the Rays this weekend. Fun episode, fun weekend of baseball, fun to see Adley up. And listen, the Orioles go to New York this week, starting tonight, a three-game series at Yankee Stadium. And it's a 7.05 start in the Bronx. And guess what? Adley Rutschman is going to be catching and going to be in the lineup in the Bronx as the O's try to beat the Yankees, who just continue to surge. Of course, the Yankees just took three out of four from the Orioles at Camden Yards. Yankees now 29 and 11 as of recording. They're currently playing right now on Sunday Night Baseball, but it's two veterans on Monday night. It's Jordan Lyles and it's Garrett Cole. Of course, Cole went seven innings against the Orioles last week, allowed two runs. But Jordan Lyles, I mean, pretty much matched him in that game against the New York offense. Gave up three runs in the first inning, but then dialed in and lasted seven, allowing just those three runs, only two earned, a season-high eight Ks and no walks. 
Let's see it again, Jordan Lyles, as the O's take on the Yankees. Maybe can keep the vibes going. And of course, Adley will be in the lineup. But I'll be back with you here tomorrow on the podcast. I'll get you updated on all the roster moves that the Orioles make. We know they're going to make at least one, probably two, to bring in some new arms. We'll talk about that. We'll get an update on Spencer Watkins. You know, will he be able to make his next start? Or will the O's need a starting pitcher this weekend in Boston? And could it be Grayson Rodriguez, who threw a season-high six innings and struck out nine with a season-high pitch count, allowed just two runs in his start on Sunday? Talk about that. And of course, we'll recap game one of the series between the Orioles and the Yankees. But that's all coming up on tomorrow's episode. Until then, enjoy Adley. And this has been the Locked On Orioles podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.